Our community is connected. We support a model democracy where our people are connected and are invited to engage and collaborate with their local government. Our community is sustainable. We deliver world-class, innovative and efficient services for our residents, our businesses and our visitors. Our community is resilient, from medical facilities to sports and recreation venues, parks, playgrounds, and paths. We are committed to all who live and work here. Dublin is a visionary city, investing in our future to create a place where there is opportunity and all are welcome. Dublin is where diverse businesses come to grow and thrive. It's no wonder we've been named the best suburb to do business 12 years in a row. We are a leader in innovation with state-of-the-art technology to connect over 50,000 residents, 4,000 businesses, and over 3.2 million visitors each year. While Dublin is innovative, progressive, and forward-thinking, we honor and cherish its rich history. Our community is a place where bold and dynamic work happens, where families, they thrive and they grow, where entrepreneurs imagine and they innovate, and where visitors discover. Dublin is consistently ranked one of the safest cities in our nation. We are committed to working in partnership with the community to continuously improve safety and ensure public trust. Dublin is home to world-class events and a destination for sports, recreation, music, and culture. Dublin is fortunate to have residents who give tirelessly through volunteerism, outreach, and action. Our residents speak up, pull together, and drive change. They are the true difference makers. We are a community of lifelong learners. From early childhood to post-college studies, Dublin is committed to exceptional educational opportunities. We know where we've been and we know where we're going, but it's how we get there that makes Dublin so special. We're a city on the move. From rideshare to bikes to kayaks, we have everything you need to get from point A to point B and everywhere in between. Dublin is a place where mobility meets sustainability, and green is more than a color. We're a model for sustainable community design that supports our natural environment. We reuse, reduce, and recycle here in Dublin every day, and we make it easy for our citizens to do the very same. We do this because it makes a difference, and we do this with the help of our partners. From our top 10 fleet in North America to recently becoming the only city in the state of Ohio, to earn the prestigious Silver Level Bicycle Community designation, we're on a roll. We're the city everybody's talking about. And thanks to you, we've got great stories to tell. In Dublin, we strive to be the most sustainable, connected, and resilient global city of choice. And that's thanks to you, our residents, our businesses, and our partners, all working together. This is our community, and this is our story. everybody and welcome to the 2023 State of the Community. I'm Dublin Mayor Jane Fox and I want to thank all of you for being here this evening. As you saw in the video, the City of Dublin has some great stories to tell and this is our opportunity to share them with all of you. But before we begin, I just want to thank the pride of our community, our students, the, both the Dublin Jerome High School Strings Ensemble and the Dublin Kaufman High School Pep Band. Thank you, guys. Great musical talent we have in this city. I hope you enjoyed the opening video, because tonight we have with us the stars of the video, and I am so proud to work with this group of individuals. We have um, individuals, our council members, who wake up every morning dedicated to doing what's best for this city. They really work hard, tirelessly to direct the policies of the city, and I know for a fact that they love Dublin. So allow me to recognize my fellow city council members, Vice Mayor Kathy DeRosa, Chris Amorous Grooms, Andy Keeler, John Reiner, 
Amy Cram, and Christina Aluda. We also have some very special guests here with us this evening. State Senator Stephanie Kunze has joined us this evening. And I believe that State Representative Tracy Richardson might be here this evening as well. And we have representatives from Congressman Mike Carey's office. So we're welcoming many of our friends and many of our partners for, from the surrounding communities. And if you're an elected official and you've come to join us tonight, would you please stand up so that we might recognize you? Now this city was built on a lot of people, and we are also fortunate tonight to have some former Dublin mayors here, Joel Campbell and Tim Licklider, and former Dublin Vice Mayor Bob Adamek, Kathy Boring, and Amy Sale. So we have former Council Member Ron Geese, and we're very, very welcome, uh, very, very honored to welcome them. So, there's one other person that is just recently announced, and I think you would be excited to hear this. The newly named and first Irish Honorary Consul General in Ohio is Mark Owens. That's the first time we've ever had anyone like that. And if Mark Owens is here, and I'm not sure he is, but um, we will make sure that we have great communications with him because we, the city is going to Dublin, Ireland next week to sign a friendship agreement with the Irish, uh, the Dublin mayor of, of Ireland. So we're uh, looking forward to having that relationship with Mark. So also in attendance tonight, we have members from the Dublin Board of Education, the president, Chris Valentine, Vice President, Lindsay Gillis, and board members, Tiffany DeSalvo, Scott Melody, and Diana Rigby. <laughs> Our Worsham Township trustees are here also, Stu Harris, uh, Jan Rosansky, and Chuck Cranstuber. So we're announcing all these names because they're very special to us, and we also want to keep you awake. <laughs> so also joining us tonight and participating in a panel that we know this evening will be informational and very impressive for you is our Dublin City Schools Superintendent, Dr. Marsh House. Dr. John Marshhausen, <laughs> and our Washington Township Administrator, Eric Richter, and Kenny McDonald, the CEO and President of Columbus Partnerships. <laughs> so on behalf of the City of Dublin, we want to give some very special acknowledgement and our heartfelt appreciation to the members of our commissions, the members of our boards, and our advisory boards, because your outstanding commitment, the dedication that you give to the city, we don't know how we can thank you enough. Because of you, we are the city that we are. And it's so important that your time, talents, and efforts are given to the city because they really matter. And speaking of that service and dedication, I would like to congratulate two very deserving members that have just recently been tapped to do something very special this year, Deb Papish, if she's here, and maybe many of you might know her. She is this year's Grand Leprechaun, and she will be presiding over the greenest and the grandest parade this Saturday. And Fado Pub and Kitchen owner, Ian Montgomery, is here this evening, I think, and he has been selected to be the honorary chair of this year's Dublin Irish Festival. So Deb and Ian are such examples of people who give their services, their talents to the city, and it's what makes the city so very special. So we thank you both for all you do for Dublin, and like so many people in our community who make this world a better place on a daily basis, we appreciate all of you, the neighbors that do something for your neighbor next door, the people that volunteer at the schools, those who volunteer at their church, those people that help support our nonprofits, you're all so very important. You do so much in so many big and small ways. You are kind of the secret sauce of what makes Dublin so special here, and that's why we love living here. We thank you so much for everything that you do because we believe that you are the reason that Dublin is such a special place, so thank you. 
It is Dublin City Council's vision to be a global city of choice. And that means that we are the most sustainable, the most connected, and the most resilient city. And we reinforce that vision with some supporting themes of economics, quality of life, land use, and infrastructure. And to accomplish these goals, it requires strong leadership. And we've got just the right person in charge to help us steer that ship. In 2022, Dublin City Council selected a new city manager upon the retirement of our former city manager, Dana McDaniel. And although our new city manager might be new to this role, she's not new to the city. Megan has been serving the residents of Dublin since 2014, when she was hired as the city's public service director. And during her tenure, she has filled so many roles, numerous roles. She was deputy city manager, chief finance and development officer. She was deputy city manager and director of public works. She's overseen nearly all of the city's departments and divisions, and she's executed many of the city's capital improvements programs. So one of the hallmarks of her career is that you, one that you'll find extremely impressive. She was so involved, I would say hard hat involved in project management and oversight of something that we all love, our iconic Dublin Link Bridge. This is something that we're so proud of and because of Megan, she was out there with her hard hat on and she did a great job. So throughout her career, Megan has been very innovative. She has a commitment to innovation, she has a commitment to technology, and she helped launch our popular Go Dublin app, which is our customer service app. She also helped develop the SnowGo system, which I know you all are aware of, so you can, you can in real time know where the trucks are and whether or not your street is gonna get plowed and when it will happen. She's also a very proud resident, and she's passionate about something we all love, which is community engagement and community collaboration. As you can see, Megan O'Callaghan has already created a great legacy in this city. And I would be so happy to introduce you to her and welcome her to the stage. Please welcome our city manager, Megan O'Callaghan. Thank you so much, Mayor Fox, and thank you all for being here tonight for our 2023 State of the Community. Each year, in the spirit of transparency and public engagement, we invite the community, including area elected officials, Dublin residents and businesses, and our regional partners to our State of the City event. This is our chance to share a financial update, including our revenues, expenditures, investments and initiatives with our taxpayers and other stakeholders. And this year, we are pleased to expand this event to highlight the state of our community, which gives us a chance to highlight the power of community and collaboration to achieving lofty goals. With that, I would like to once again recognize Dublin City Council, which sets the tone and the vision to make Dublin what it is today, to keep improving and innovating, and to keep striving to be the best of the best. Tonight, I am pleased to report that the state of our city is strong, and our path forward is clear, and our future is bright. That is thanks to the vision and policies set forth by our city council. In 2022, council adopted a new strategic framework. And with this strategic framework in place and an elite team of elected officials and city employees at work, Dublin is in an outstanding position to continue thriving as a model democracy and exceptional community. One that is forward thinking, and future conscious. In Dublin, we understand the importance of protecting our environment for future generations, and we are committed to reducing our carbon footprint and promoting clean energy. 
We have made great strides in this area, and we will continue to lead the way in promoting sustainability. We have one of the greenest fleets in North America, earning the number three ranking in 2022. Our electric vehicle inventory grows each year, and we continue to add charging stations around the city and public parking lots, including at our own city hall. Across the city, electric vehicle charging stations saved more than 7,000 gallons of gas, which equates to nearly 64 metric tons of CO2 and a monetary savings of about $25,000. Last fall, we launched a styrofoam collection program, which recycled more than one ton of material in its very first four months. Styrofoam drop-off is available at the City of Dublin Service Center, where residents can also recycle electronics and compost food waste. We offer a 24-7 medication drop box at the Justice Center, six prescription pill drop-off events each year, two document destruction days, and a hazardous waste collection event. These initiatives divert tons of waste away from our landfill each year. Our 2022 waste diversion rate was nearly 50% which is well above the national and state averages. And in true green fashion, we planted more than a thousand trees last year. Of course, we can always do more, and we certainly plan to. <laughs> City Council has budgeted two programs to help with sustainability education. Through our partnership with SWACO, we will be joining the Save More Than Food program, and that's an effort to cut Central Ohio food waste in half by 2030. We will also, once again, be participating in the Recycle Right campaign to increase residential recycling. These programs are meant to inform and inspire, and as we work collectively toward a greener tomorrow, we know that our actions now truly make a difference. Our partners at Rumpke, continue to find ways to accept more materials through the curbside recycling program. Due to innovations in the recycling industry, we now accept paper, plastic, and aluminum cups, including disposable coffee cups and Ardora cups. We are also working to update city code surrounding the use of renewable energy equipment for solar power. And this effort will promote solar energy by providing clarity for residents and businesses looking to install renewable energy equipment on their properties. Dublin will seek to continue and incorporate ways to support our natural environment while providing diverse living, entertainment, and recreational experience. We are also one of the world's most connected communities. Dublin connects residents and businesses to state-of-the-art, reliable, and safe infrastructure, including water, power, thoroughfares, and expansive broadband capability. Our 100 gig Dublink fiber network provides lightning speed, reliable connectivity to our businesses, our hospitals, the Northwest Regional Emergency Communications Center, and the Dublin City Schools. And this year, Dublin is poised to move forward with a plan to provide 10 gig broadband capability to all of our residences. We are finalizing discussions with industry partners and plan to choose our path forward very soon. This is a substantial investment by Dublin City Council in support of their goal of being the most connected city. We also know the importance of connecting people to places. And through our partnership with Share Mobility, the Dublin Connector provided more than 11,000 rides for Dublin seniors, workforce, and people with disabilities last year. We launched a micro-mobility pilot program, making electric scooters available for transportation and recreation. And our more than 150 miles of shared use paths helped us become the first city in Ohio to earn a silver level bicycle friendly community distinction.
We plan to expand upon those connections in 2023 with the addition of another 1.6 miles of new shared use paths, as well as a new COGO bike share pilot program, which will include bicycles as well as e-bikes. And it's amenities like these that improve the quality of life for our residents, businesses, as well as all the visitors to Dublin. We connect you to attractive amenities and exceptional services through the convenient Go Dublin app. More than 7,000 requests were submitted through the app last year. And of course, those requests are not fulfilled without the team of dedicated public servants who work for the city of Dublin. From unrivaled snow removal to curbside chipper, and exemplary park maintenance, Dublin services are the envy of cities all around the country, as well as a point of pride for our residents. In our 2022 Community Attitude Survey, residents gave us a 99% approval rating. And it's that feedback from our residents that validates that we are connecting with our community in a very meaningful way. We know that the most important connections we can make are those among people, including connecting residents to their local democracy. City Council holds meetings every other Monday, which are open to the public and they're in person and online. So you can participate both ways. All of our board and commission meetings are open to the public and promoted on the city's website as well. This includes meetings of the Community Inclusion Advisory Committee, which was established in 2022 to advise city council on the unique needs of diverse Dublin residents. Everyone is welcome to participate in those important conversations. We are very fortunate to have nearly 3,000 volunteers who connect with their community through service. They participate in river cleanups and neighborhood service projects. They work to preserve headstones at the Dublin Cemetery, and they connect us to culture and history through the Heritage Interpreter Program, which launched just last year and offers free informational tours at Ferris Wright Park and they make our world-renowned events possible. Without volunteers, we could not host our beloved events, including the St. Patrick's Day Parade, Independence Day Celebration, and the Dublin Irish Festival. So while our signature events are indicative of a connected community, they are also a shining example of our community's remarkable resilience. During the heart of the COVID-19 pandemic, our dedicated team went the extra mile to reimagine events and create other opportunities for people to have shared experiences safely. We held reverse parades, caravans through neighborhoods, drive-in movie events, and hosted virtual events, theater productions, and recreation classes. In partnership with Visit Dublin, we faced many challenges and we worked together to keep building Dublin as a destination city. 2022 saw the return of normal for many of the events and experiences we were accustomed to before COVID. But the year was not without challenges. We saw a blustery dedication event for Riverside Crossing Park and the Dublin Link. We had thousands of people brave the wind and the snow to see the fireworks and be a part of that historic event. And that same week, last March, our 2022 St. Patrick's Day Parade had to be rescheduled due to cold, snowy, and windy weather. But what did we do? We went back to the drawing board and quickly planned a St. Patrick's Day family celebration at Kaufman Park. And in true Dublin or Central Ohio fashion, just five days later, the weather was sunny, around 70 degrees, and a perfect evening for lots of family fun. So the Dublin community came out in droves, and while this exemplifies the resilience and agility of our city and this community, 
I have to say that we are very excited to host your greenest, grandest parade through historic Dublin this Saturday. It will be our first St. Patrick's Day parade since 2019, and we know it will be greener and grander than ever. Last year also saw the city's first Juneteenth celebration, commemorating the end of slavery in the United States. Dublin students, city leaders, and residents joined together June 19th at Riverside Crossing Park for a moving ceremony and then walked together across the Dublin link as a sign of unity. In partnership with the Dublin AM Rotary, we dedicated a peace poll at Kaufman Park demonstrating our commitment to promoting peace in our community and encouraging respectful conversations. And events such as these demonstrate that Dublin is a city where all are welcomed, safe, valued, engaged, and included. In furtherance of inclusion and safety, we launched the Safe Space Dublin late last year. There are now 12 safe space locations throughout the community, including all city buildings, Washington Township fire stations, and Centero. And these areas are designated as safe havens for people in personal crisis and those who have experienced hate crimes, threats, or intimidation. The program is set to expand this year with new partners, including Crawford Hoyne and the Dublin Arts Council. So please look for more information soon regarding this growing network of safe spaces. And nothing is more important to us than your safety. Dublin is consistently recognized among the safest communities in the nation. Last year, burglary and breaking and entering offenses reached a record low. Your Dublin Police Department increased staffing to 74 authorized officers who support the department's mission of protection, service, and public safety in partnership with the community. We partner with the Dublin City Schools, Washington Township, surrounding law enforcement agencies, and countless other organizations to promote a safe and resilient community. And it's these partnerships that include school resource officers in our schools, regular emergency preparedness training, and ongoing planning, collaboration, and communication. While the city of Dublin has many strategic partners, none are more important than you, our community. You are the reason that we do everything that we do, and you set the standard. It has always been that way in Dublin, and we will continue to be citizen-centered and resident-driven. 2023 is going to be a pivotal year in terms of planning. We are beginning an effort to update our community plan. This crucial plan guides how we wanna grow, develop, and improve so that we can continue to be a desirable and sustainable community. Our community plan was last updated in 2013, and it has guided our development and progress over the last decade. But it is certainly time to revisit that and look at it through a fresh lens. Our community plan update effort will include a robust public input process, which officially kicks off tonight. I hope each of you had a chance to visit our Envision Dublin booth this evening. There will be many more opportunities to participate in the process throughout the year. We have a website where feedback will be collected. We will also be having a series of public meetings that will be conversational and interactive to solicit feedback from the community. The first community conversation is scheduled for April 18th, and you all are invited to attend and participate in that. We have several other important planning efforts underway, including the Parks and Rec Master Plan and 
our economic development strategy update, which are both being finalized. Those findings, along with other strategic plans, will be used to inform the community plan update so that we may move toward the future with one comprehensive guidepost. In Dublin, we dream big, we collaborate, we plan, and then we find a way to make our big ideas become reality. And this is possible thanks to our resilient income tax base. In 2022, we once again surpassed $100 million in income tax withholdings, ending the year with a record-breaking $104 million. And this is an indication that our businesses are doing very well, which is something we all can celebrate. Our thriving financial position is what allows us to provide the best services to our residents and businesses to fund transportation, parks, facilities, and other infrastructure, and to boldly invest in the future. With that, I am pleased to introduce Chief Financial Officer, Director of Finance, Matt Stifler, who has a closer look at our financial picture. And as you will see, it is strong, sustainable, and stable. Twenty twenty two was another strong year for the city of Dublin. Our successes this year show we are fiscally responsible, resilient, and financially sustainable. Based on what we accomplished in twenty twenty two, we're off to the races for a strong start to twenty twenty three. As part of that racing theme, I'm excited to share with you that the city earned the rare Triple Crown distinction for fiscal health, transparency, and accountability from the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada, or DFOA. We're one of just 317 governments in the United States and Canada to receive this award for fiscal year 2020. The Triple Crown designation validates that we meet the high standards in all three separate award programs that recognize governments for producing reports that communicate their financial stories, transparency, and meet all applicable standards. While the award reviews our reporting based on 2020 financials, we've continued to maintain the same level of transparency and information sharing with our residents and business community. We are headed down the home stretch for another strong year. As the world continues to move on from the pandemic, the city proved our resiliency with our continued economic recovery and growth this year. We've added new businesses and seen other businesses commit to growing and adding to their workforce here in Dublin. Supply chain issues may have impacted the speed of construction, but it certainly didn't stop it. On both the business and residential front, Dublin remains the place where people want to work, live, and play. All of this development has had a strong impact on the growth of our city's tax base. Our income tax revenue, which makes up more than 75% of the city's operating revenues, is generated by Dublin's 2% income tax, which is one of the lowest in central Ohio. This tax is distributed with 75% to the general fund, which supports city operations, and 25% to the capital improvements fund, which supports the maintenance of the city's existing infrastructure and new capital projects. These revenues increased by 3.7% in 2022, and our income tax revenue exceeded $100 million for the second time in the city's history. While income tax revenue may fluctuate as people continue to work from home, we've been actively communicating with our employers to understand their needs and support them. This past year, our Economic Development Division hosted two virtual hiring events to help Dublin-based businesses recruit new employees. More than 1,800 prospective employees and almost 50 companies registered to participate in online chat interviews, and we're optimistic that this will offer long-term benefits to our business community. We also saw gains in other revenue sources that positively impacted the city. Hotel motel fund related revenues grew over 55% in 2022 with the rebound of travel, tourism and work related conferences as well as the return of the Dublin Irish Festival. Our recreation related revenues grew over 27% in 2022, including the Dublin Community Recreation Center memberships, which rebounded to near pre-pandemic levels in 2022. 
the pace of the recovery has been significant and points to a very strong 2023. An important component of the city's fiscal health is the city's general fund balance. Dublin ended 2022 with a general fund balance of 63.7 million, or 73.8% of 2022 general fund expenditures. This very strong fund balance sets us up to continue to make significant strategic investments, supporting our city's strategic framework. As we ended 2022 and begin to explore 2023, there are continued economic development opportunities, including the acquisition of land, as well as the completion and execution of the city's parks master plan, among a few projects moving this community forward. Our themes of sustainable and connected are evident in how Dublin continues to invest in the city's infrastructure. By maintaining the funding necessary to keep our current assets well-maintained, while still allowing for the opportunity to create new assets that will propel Dublin forward. 2022 was a comeback year for the city of Dublin. While we aren't yet free and clear of the after effects of the pandemic, we've seen the strength and resilience of our community as we've pulled together to realize continued economic recovery and growth. I'm proud of what we've accomplished and I'm excited about our future. As our Triple Crown Honors show, we have been recognized globally by our peers for our exemplary fiscal health, accountability, and transparency. Our strong fiscal health is a testimony to the sustainable, resilient, connected community we have in Dublin. Win, place, or show, we are well positioned to continue to provide world-class innovative services and amenities, making us the front runner for where our residents and businesses can thrive. And I'm happy to report that 2023 is off to another solid start. Despite the challenges remote work can place on predicting income tax withholdings, our strong <laughs> revenues being up 1% at the end of February compared to last year. We are executing a $225.7 million capital program, which City Council adopted last year to maintain our infrastructure and comprehensively plan for future capital projects. And as of last month, our Dublin Community Recreation Center memberships rebounded and surpassed our pre-COVID numbers. Our fiscal stability, first-rate amenities, and community resilience are all possible because of our corporate residents and ongoing economic development efforts. Thanks to our aggressive efforts to attract diverse, high-quality commercial development, we added and retained more than 1,000 jobs last year. We welcomed Ohio State Outpatient Care Dublin, a state-of-the-art medical facility that provides a variety of services for the community. And we worked with Mount Carmel Health System to finalize a development plan for a new medical campus along Emerald Parkway near Sawmill Road that will provide critical healthcare access for our residents. Medical investments have long been a part of Dublin's growth and success, and the city is quickly emerging as a leading health and wellness hub with new investments along with the success of our longstanding partners such as Cardinal Health, Ohio Health, and Ohio University's Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine. Through our growing healthcare sector, Dublin and our partners are actively working to ensure the health of our community and our local economy. We don't accomplish great things alone. We do it through thoughtful and strategic planning and through regional collaboration. And now I would like to welcome to the stage some special guests this evening. Dr. Marshhausen, Superintendent of Dublin City Schools, Eric Richter, Township Administrator for Washington Township, and Kenny McDonald, President and CEO of the Columbus Partnership, a civic organization of Columbus's top business leaders. Right, your phone. Well, thank you all for being here this evening with us. 
Um, we're excited about this conversation. As we've been discussing tonight, Dublin City Council's vision is to be the most sustainable, resilient, and connected global city of choice. And it takes all of us to make that happen. So let's start with you, John. We've talked a lot about the city's vision and strategic framework, and the Dublin City Schools are in the midst of a strategic planning process yourselves. Can you tell us about that process? And can you also tell us if, about the opportunities that you see um, of benefiting and coordinating these efforts? Well, I think, first of all, one of the things that we did when we entered into this strategic planning process is we came to our partners at the city and asked how the city has done this work over the years. Schools haven't always been successful creating strategic plans that move the needle. And being part of this community, I, I asked you and Dana, who did you use? And we've been partnering with Planning Next, a long-term partner of the city of Dublin. And on Monday night, we will be presenting to the Board of Education a strategic framework that is modeled after the work that the city of Dublin has done. And we're very excited to put together a framework that has this municipal type approach to setting goals, holding ourselves accountable to those goals, and continuing to be able to grow as a school district. It takes that nimble approach to prepare students to be successful when they walk across that stage and they get a Dublin diploma. And the partnership has really, I believe, given us an opportunity to even set ourselves further apart as a school district in a community. Excellent. Okay, Eric, so when you look at the city strategic framework and the school strategic planning process, you just know that safety is a top priority across the board. So Washington Township is such a key partner in keeping our community safe and resilient. So can you talk about how the township collaborates with both entities, both the schools and the city, to improve the quality of life in Dublin and achieve council's lofty visions? Sure, uh, great question, Megan. Um, you know, our primary goal is keeping the community safe. And that, that we do that a lot of different ways. Um, each and every day, we, we work with side by side with Dublin Police Department and NREC uh, to go out and respond to fires and, and EMS calls. But there's other ways that we try to uh, keep the community safe through public education and messaging. Um, some of our uh, training that we do, uh, there's a class that we've got coming up, and I'll, shameless plug, until help arrives. Um, but that, that, that's a program that we put together that we coordinate with our partners at the Dublin Police Department and NREC. And it provides residents with some basic information about things that they can do. If you're in a car accident and somebody gets injured, um, what are some things you can do until police and, and, and fire and EMS arrive on scene? So, so those are, that's another way that we try to um, educate the community and keep the community safe. Um, I've got my, my partner here from the Dublin City Schools, and uh, last summer, the Washington Township Fire Department, Dublin Police, and the school district worked, to, worked together on um, uh, active shooter training. Um, you know, difficult subject. It's something obviously that we hope this community never has to face, but I think we all have a commitment here to planning and preparing for any emergency that comes up in the community. And I think that we're all committed to that. And I think having the relationships um, with our peers and our partners um, prior to an emergency is critical to, to responding to an emergency, so. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, Kenny, so we are so fortunate to have you with us this evening because you can share how Dublin's contributions and how we contribute to the broader region. Um, so thinking about this in terms of one of our themes tonight, sustainability, we'll talk about environmental sustainability in a little bit, but for the meantime, let's talk about economic sustainability. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what's going on in the region right now and how Dublin fits into that picture? Uh, well, first of all, can, uh, thank you for having me and congratulations on uh, just a spectacular um, several years uh, get, to get to the point and, and the report that you just give is, uh, should be something that inspires uh, communities not just uh, around our region but around Ohio. Um, the vision of this region is be the, be the most prosperous in the country. 
And what we mean by that is uh, growth is good. Growth uh, fuels our economy, it brings dollars into our community, it brings ideas and people uh, that aren't here uh, presently. Uh, it keeps our students and uh, the talent that we have in our, in our market. Um, uh, but if we, we, we also have to be closing gaps. Um, so good government, um, safety, um, uh, great education opportunities, uh, those are the things that close the gaps. And uh, the things that you're talking about now, I've been here 12 years, uh, weren't necessarily on the docket when I first visited Dublin or a whole bunch of communities 12 years ago. Uh, and it's great to see that they're not only elevated, but they're being executed. Uh, and so Dublin is a leader uh, and someone that um, other communities are going to look to. Um, and I would just encourage the whole community to continue to take measured smart risks uh, because it's such a fascinating time to grow your economy. And it's going to require that for Dublin to get to the next level. Um, and I'll just end with saying, you know, this has been the greatest period of growth in uh, Central Ohio's history the last five years. Uh, I don't anticipate that to change. We have announcements and great things happening all the time. Um, but it's going to take a, an enormous amount of creativity and collaboration uh, to overcome some of the challenges in the new economy uh, and the way the world works now post-pandemic. And, and I look forward to Dublin being, uh, I, I would say, a primary partner in that effort. Great. Okay, so let's stick with that topic for a minute. As part of your job, you are tasked with helping the Columbus region achieve its vision to become the most prosperous metropolitan area in the United States. So what, from your standpoint, is Dublin doing to support that vision? And what are some things that we should keep doing or things that we should start doing? Well, I think, I think the video uh, said a lot in your, in, your, in your report, spoke to it very directly. It's uh, intentionally trying to grow in a smart way uh, and actually pursuing all of the other things that close those gaps with equal vigor. Most places don't do that. In fact, if you look at a metropolitan and a metropolitan uh, uh, perspective, zero out of 200 places in this country um, uh, had a thriving economy, raised the standard of living for all of their residents, uh, and had a positive change in economic mobility. No one accomplished that from a metropolitan standpoint. Um, it's possible for some suburban cities like Dublin to attack that. Uh, and the things that you're doing um, are exactly what you have to do to do that. And it's not easy uh, to go after those two things simultaneously uh, and to be excellent at multiple things at once and to execute. And so kudos to the team. Uh, stay after it. Sustainability, resilience, inclusivity, uh, and economic growth can work together. They're not opposing uh, each other. Great points, thank you very much. So let's continue talking about economic development. I'm gonna turn to John because as you know, um, Dublin City Schools is certainly one of our biggest selling points as a city. Businesses, employees, they wanna locate um, here in part because of the great school system. So what elevates the Dublin City Schools to... I think, as Kenny said, you've got to be able to do multiple things at the same time. We have amazing teachers who lay an academic foundation and build a foundation in our students, starting with those fundamental skills that don't change as other things change in our community. The foundations of math, of reading, the value of hard work, the value of character. Those are things that we have to continue to do as a school district while the world around us changes. But at the same time, we have to adapt and adjust as we prepare students for different pathways. We have to be able to continue to prepare students for four-year colleges, but we also have to be able to prepare some of our students to enter right into the workforce. Uh, as I came in today, I talked to some of our friends from Intel who are joining us tonight. Our partnership with Columbus State and with Intel to prepare the next generation of workers to fill that need as the economy changes and as our students change and what they need changes. We've got to be able to do that. Our Business Advisory Council met out at the airport this week and in a program in our Aviation Academy that started with six students a couple years ago, next year we have 50 students looking at all the different aviation fields and being able to explore and experience while still in high school and get a jump on what's next. 
and as we look at our healthcare partners, as we see three major healthcare facilities, half of our sophomore class identified healthcare is a field that they may be interested in in the future. How do we build healthcare academies and partner with Ohio, Ohio Health and Columbus State and Ohio State and Ohio University to make sure that we're filling those needs and setting our students up for that success and what's next? And I believe we do it better than anybody else. I believe so too. So Eric, a similar question for you. So safety is one of the biggest reasons that people want to live in a community. Washington Township is among the best fire and EMS organizations in the country. So tell us about that and tell us about how you work to ensure that we have the safest community. Okay, well, I appreciate that question too, Megan, because it's something obviously that Washington Township is very proud of that the Washington Township Fire Department um, is both accredited and an ISO 1 rated uh, fire department. And that distinguishes it. So there's, it's one of only four in the state of Ohio that, that has both designations. And obviously that's something that we're very proud of. Um, for, uh, what that means is it, it's, a, it's professional fire department peers come in and evaluate your, uh, your policies, your procedures, your equipment, your staffing, your response time. Um, and they come in and they make recommendations uh, to help you become better. Um, so we're really proud of that accreditation. The, the department was originally accredited in 2007, and I'm happy to report that they uh, returned for a site visit in 2022, and the department was reaccredited again. So 15 years the department has maintained that, that designation, and, and we, we, we value that and appreciate that. Um, ISO 1 uh, refers to insurance services offices. Um, this is a rating uh, that factors into premium costs as it relates to property and casualty insurance, based on my understanding, um, for businesses and, and some residential homeowners. And so ISO 1 is the highest rating that you can achieve. And so we have to give a lot of credit to our partners at the city because a significant portion of their evaluation pertains to uh, water supply, hydrants, development standards, and things like that. So uh, our partnership with the city on that, on that is very important and, and a, a key component to that designation. I bring that up because I think it's important for residents to know that um, you have an accredited fire department, you have an accredited police department, and an accredited uh, NREC, which is the uh, Northwest Regional Emergency Communications Center. So what that means as a resident is, is your entire public safety um, uh, infrastructure, if you will, is working together and they're holding themselves to the highest standards of professionalism and um, uh, uh, excellence in their respective areas. And, and so that's why I wanted to bring that up. So I appreciate having the question, Megan. Thank you so much for sharing that, Eric, and kudos to the entire team for that rating. So Kenny, um, looking ahead at all of the regional growth on the horizon with Central Ohio's population projected to exceed 3 million by 2050, there might be some people in the audience that are curious and wondering, is the region really a point, a housing standpoint, our schools, emergency services? Do we have the infrastructure to accommodate all that growth? I think we have an enormous amount of work to do, um, but I will say that um, we're as prepared as any region in the country. Uh, and if you, uh, if you, if if anybody visited uh, here tonight and, and walked in and didn't know a thing about our region, um, and 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 saw the presentation and um, and actually just kind of uh, went to your Envision booth and um, talked to some people, I, I I think that you'll find that we're as we're as prepared as we can be for this. Um, you know, we've had uh, uh, the, the announcement with Honda and LG uh, uh, is bringing hundreds of millions of dollars to the 33 corridor and billions of dollars um, uh, to the corridor between us and Cincinnati, uh, the, the corridor in, with semiconductors, the, uh, the entire region. Uh, and I'm glad we're studying aerospace and aviation. We just announced at Ohio State yesterday one of the most exciting private space uh, travel projects in the entire country with Nanoracks and Voyager. Um, uh, those people are making conscious decisions after their due diligence. Um, and what they see is a prepared region. What they see is a region that's poised for growth. Um, 
Now, that's going to make some of us anxious, um, and it's going to come perhaps a little more quickly and in different ways than we anticipated. Um, and um, after the last five years, we should be getting used to that theory uh, because uh, the world's going to be, remain uh, a little volatile. Um, now, we're going to have to do some things that we, that we haven't done before in housing, certainly in transit, uh, and quite frankly, in the collaboration of the pursuit of federal dollars, uh, the likes of which we've not seen uh, in generations, and the place-based strategies that are being laid out by the Biden administration and Congress, um, I think it's our job to take advantage of them uh, and not to just do so in each of our uh, cities and counties, uh, but to do it as an entire region and fit it together. It's the economic mobility patterns that have maybe been uh, in place for decades um, and kind of set the pace for the rest of the country, in fact. Um, when we have these, we have U.S. Mayor's Conference here uh, in June, um, I, I, my anticipation is that we can get, send them home scared to death, uh, <laughs> that they can't beat us. Uh, and so I hope, uh, I hope a lot of people attend to that, but uh, I, th I think we, we, we do we want to send a message that we're ready to go. Absolutely, absolutely. So, John, what are the projections for student population and how is the district pre preparing to handle that growth? The, the projections for population continue to increase. Dublin is a destination district. And as we look at growth in central Ohio, this is the district that people want to come with their children. So we have to be prepared to be looking at and to consider what's next for us. We open a 60,000 square foot addition on Jerome High School this coming fall. We are on schedule and ready to open. We are preparing to come to the voter school uh, as we continue to grow. The elementary schools that we just opened three years ago are at capacity, and we continue to have families move in with young kids because this is such a desirable community, both because of the partnership with the city and the school, and it's safe, and all you have to do is watch the video to know why people want to move here to Dublin to raise their families. We're gonna have some engaged, difficult conversations in the next several years. We have to decide, do we want to have three larger high schools, or do we wanna open a fourth high school? And all of those conversations are things that we have to be able to do and that we're pre prepared to engage you, our community, and make a decision together. Can I, can I just add to that? Um, all over central Ohio, uh, there's a conversation about growth and the difficult decisions with, that we're going to... Um, I, I just I call on us to think about uh, all, the, uh, all the great assets that we're living within right now and the difficult conversations and the leadership it took to actually build the communities that we live in now. These, these decisions were made you know, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, um, in rooms like this, and in conversations with leaders that um, had less resources, uh, had less growth, um, had less visibility to the future than we perhaps do right now. Um, and uh, if we just keep that in mind, that it's our turn, uh, to make those decisions, to have the hard conversations, uh, and to take some bold risks and to do things differently. Um, because so many people that came before us actually did that anyway uh, for us. We have to do that now, and it's our turn. So uh, I'm very confident about that, but we have to constantly bring that reminder up. Okay, great. So last question is for Kenny. We are updating our community plan, as I mentioned, um, and that's going to guide our community for decades to come. So. Before coming to Columbus, you worked with metropolitan areas in Savannah, Albuquerque, Charlotte. So in your experience, what are some of the hallmarks of a well-planned and... Well, uh, my day job is uh, to lead a private sector uh, leadership coalition of CEOs. Uh, and so, um, uh, lest I get fired, I'll start with what I think is most important, uh, which is private sector leadership. Um, I think that um, good, giver, good government exists not everywhere. Uh, obviously, is a great example here in Dublin uh, tonight. But without private sector leadership partnering with that, um, you know, your schools are going to struggle. 
Um, you got to have private sector partnerships for safety. You got to have par private sector partnerships for building a variety of housing. Uh, and you certainly have to have a private sector to bring the dollars in, the new dollars in that are going to circulate through the community and build a real economy. Um, and so um, we're blessed to have that here. Um, I, 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 I want to say it's a secret sauce. Um, we, we like to talk about the Columbus Way, but all that simply is is leaders passing along that there's an expectation that as a business leader, small, medium, large, that you're going to be involved and you're going to be a partner of the community. Um, and, the, and the expectation should, be, um, should also be re reciprocated, um, right? But I, I, I'm a big believer that without business at the table, entrepreneurs, risk takers, creative people constantly coming to the table, um, uh, the community struggle. And the ones that do it best um, and do it in a very, very collaborative way, even if they have disagreements sometimes, um, they're not just marginally ahead. They're significantly ahead. Um, and uh, if you go around the country, um, you'll have some business groups where government leaders aren't welcome in the room and vice versa. And um, we just don't have this as I go around our region. Um, we, it doesn't mean we agree all the time. Um, but that's something that we have to really cherish. And so the comments about civility, having conversations, bringing the kinds of conversations that haven't existed here in a long time are really, really important. Uh, I just can't encourage everybody to keep that up enough um, and, and bring everybody to the table. Um, and let, and, and let's, keep, uh, let's keep winning. Okay, well, unfortunately, we are out of time. So, John, Eric, Kenny, thank you so much for joining us this evening, and thanks for the insights. Thank you. So, all of... All of us on the stage know the importance of economic development, and in Dublin, we are blessed to have some of the most innovative and diverse businesses on the planet, from startups to global headquarters. So tonight, we are taking this opportunity to put them in the spotlight as they tell us why they choose Dublin. Brickhouse Blue is a premier co-working and meeting and event space that's located in the Bridge Park area in downtown Dublin. Dublin is just one of the hottest and highest growing communities within central Ohio. Here at Quantum Health, we believe that no one should have to go through their healthcare journey alone. That's why Quantum helps more than 2 million employee members nationwide navigate their health benefits with less stress and better outcomes. Dublin is a place people want to come and a place people want to stay. This is truly a place that employees can work, live, and enjoy. Linear One Technologies is a fiber optic and cloud hosted VoIP provider that also has expertise in cloud infrastructure. We provide IT services and managed services for clients from desktop to keyboard, from fiber optic to the cloud. Dublin, we found, has a exceptional amount of networking groups that allow owners and motivators to come together to, to drive business. Dublin has put an incredible amount of money into their infrastructure. Hence, we use Dublink for a lot of our connections to our customers. Our Xbridge is a workers' compensation PBM. We focus on customizations for our clients. We innovate a lot of technologies with our clients. And our goal is to deliver a different injured worker experience so that not only do we save our clients money, but we also make the lives easier for everyone else providing care and coordination for the injured worker. Oh, why wouldn't we choose Dublin? You know, it's centrally located for all of us. We're surrounded by everything we need in Dublin, everything we need to do to get away from the office, some of the best restaurants around. Dublin just provides everything we need to live and work in this community every day. Oster is an Icelandic prosthetic company that helps amputees or people with limb difference 
with prosthetic devices. Bridge Park, it's a destination. We have guests come in for a, a week at a time. It's entertainment, it's dining. That whole experience of not only are we restoring your independence through a, a prosthetic device, but we're also providing a place where you can interact with other people, where you can have fun. It's uh, just really a, a great location to uh, have all those things happen. Matrix Food Technologies Incorporated is a manufacturer and designer of three-dimensional nanofiber scaffolds for the cultivation of meat. We chose Dublin because Dublin for us has been a well-designed city. The mixture of facilities that are available, as well as everything from the walking paths, a bridge park, it just makes it a really fantastic place to be able to work and entertain clients. Leading Edge is an IT consulting firm. We develop rock solid custom software for our clients. And we teach our client partners how to do the same, focusing on DevOps solutions, cloud solutions, QE solutions, and mobile solutions. Dublin is the epicenter of all things technology. The energy, the vibrance of the city, the companies that are here, the thought leaders who lead with technology as their solutions. Ease Logistics is a multi-operational supply chain and transportation company providing solutions to a select base of customers by means of our global supplier network. Growing up in Dublin, it was definitely an easy decision for me wanting to keep Ease Logistics in this town and outside of just the amenities uh, that Dublin offers from a small business standpoint, being connected with the communities and through the Dublin City Schools, it's also opened up a whole avenue of onboarding and bringing on new hires. Dublin feels a lot like our company, rooted in purpose and culture, as well as innovation and forward thinking. When you work in a place or you own a business in an environment where it's that work, play, live, there's a lot of energy. And just being a part of this overall community with all the other businesses that we support and they support us, it makes it an incredible community as well. We are so proud that these, biz these amazing businesses and more than 4,000 others choose to call Dublin home. So in closing, I hope you agree that the state of our community is sustainable, connected, resilient, and strong. I am confident that we will continue to thrive in the years ahead and I look forward to working with each of you to make Dublin an even better place to live, work, and raise a family. And now, I would like to invite local artist John Catania, Dublin Arts Council Executive Director David Guillon, and your Dublin City Council to the stage to share the art piece that you all contributed to for your community. So please help me in welcoming them to the stage. So John, could we start by, could you talk a little bit about what led you to this design? Sure. First I'm going to reveal it. Ready? Drum roll. It's done. <laughs> it's done. Yay! So I just wanted to thank uh, the City of Dublin first off for giving me this creative opportunity. Um, it was a blast putting this piece together. Um, my shoulder is very sore from all the cuts I had to put on this piece. Um, but just to give you a little background, um, my inspiration for this was to kind of merge the old Dublin with the new Dublin. So obviously you see the corn cobs from the uh, field of corn, uh, which is the old depicts the old Dublin and of course our, our bridge that we're very proud of here in Dublin uh, to bring in the new. And obviously the community, we see people in the foreground and all these um, shamrocks that I asked a lot of people to help me apply to this collage. So that's how the piece came about. Thank you so much.
and David, as you've heard here tonight, our community is sustainable, connected, and resilient. So tell us how art plays a role in that vision. Well, sustainability, the arts, we address uh, global concerns, um, economic concerns. I think for uh, connectedness, we bring people together with our art boxes, communities and neighborhoods. And I think resiliency is really what we're best at. We talk about the well-being of individuals, their mental health, and really everyone coming together. Thank you, David, and thank you, John. And thank you, the community members who helped create the piece of art. So once again, my thanks to Dublin City Council, Dublin City School Superintendent, Dr. John Marshausen, and the Dublin School Board, Washington Township Administrator, Eric Richter, and the Washington Township Trustees, President and CEO of the Columbus Partnership, Kenny McDonald. And let's give it up for the Kaufman Pep Band under the direction of, yeah, under the direction of Jason Nippert and the Jerome String Quartet under the direction of Michelle Adair. And finally, please be sure to enjoy desserts on your way out. Thank you all and have a great night.